2018 Africa Fintech Festival entered its day two with the formal opening ceremony. In his welcome address, the convener of the event, Dr. Shegun Aino, gave insight into the theme Fintech Beyond Hype and the establishment of the Africa Fintech Council. This is the maiden edition of the festival and as you can see, the theme of the festival is Beyond the Hype, Fintech Beyond the Hype. The most significant part of the festival is the unveiling of the African Fintech Network, an initiative that was conceived in January 2018 here in Lagos. Representatives from various African countries are expected to participate in the inauguration of the African Fintech Network and the announcement of African Fintech Network collaborations with other regional fintech ecosystems. In particular, the Asian Fintech Network, that is the network of all Asian countries who are working together towards improving this, the ecosystem, and the Middle East North African Fintech Association. This Middle East North African Fintech, that's MENA Fintech, was itself created about six months ago, and we've signed a working uh, document that will ensure collaboration and partnership between African countries and the, the MENA region. And indeed, also yesterday evening, we had a very, very successful meeting of African Fintech Leaders Roundtable where we discuss about what are those things that we need to do to be able to work together. What are those challenges that we have that is constraining uh, 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 or, 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 or limiting innovation, limiting adoption of, uh, of fintech? And we're able to agree on a number of, of, uh, of things. And I'm pleased to also inform you that at that meeting, the countries present there decided to set up a council to drive the initiative uh, uh, forward. And that council will be made up of seven countries, Nigeria, Egypt, Ethiopia, Uganda, South Africa, Cote d'Ivoire, and Senegal. The African FinTech Network is a makeup of national FinTech associations in African countries, fostering collaboration to create a world market FinTech platform in Africa with handshakes to the rest of the world. Giving the keynote, the CEO of Ecobank Nigeria, Mr. Patrick Akimwata, gave an overview on digitization and how collaboration is key to Africa's success in the global fintech space. The message here really is it's about scale, it's about knowledge sharing, it's about collaboration of all members in the ecosystem, be it the government, be it the educational institutions, be it um, societies, be it NGOs, be it the formal um, SME segment, multinationals, the public sector, everyone has the opportunity. The value of the pie outside the financial system in Africa is much, much greater than the pie that is within the financial system. So why won't we collaborate? Why won't we really give our shoulder to the other party to ride on so that we get to the destination much faster and be able to have a sustainable ecosystem that unleashes the value of our over 1.3 billion Africans on our continent and in diaspora. There were goodwill messages from the senior special assistant to the president on ICT, Mr. Lanre Oshibona, who represented the Nigeria's vice president, and Dr. Ibrahim Awal, the minister for business development from Ghana. We are committed to making digitalization grow. His Excellency President Akufuado of Ghana has committed $100 million per annum to support startups and small businesses. He also made secondary school education for young people free. Education is free. From primary school to senior high is very free. We cannot build an economy of Africa without building the skill sets of young people. So for us, senior secondary school, primary secondary school is, very, is, is free. Parents don't pay anything. It's important that we stabilize the economy. Predictable energy is very important for us. Before we came to power two years ago, Ghana had a balance called Dumso, erratic power generation. Companies in Ghana spend almost $300 million every month to buy generators and electricity. Today, we don't have Dumso in Ghana. Electricity is not only stable, but also very cheap. Only last month, we reduced electricity tariffs for businesses by 30% and for domestic consumers by 18%. All these measures are aimed at making businesses grow. Africa has over 60% of its population under 30 years of age. 
they are the future. The only way to make them part of an inclusive growth is to build their capacities, their competences, and to create a system that encourages them to grow. My ministry, every year, gives out support to more than 10,000 young people in terms of funding. Just have a business idea. When the idea is good, we'll give you support to grow their business. And also create markets for your products. So FinTech is the way forward. And I want to encourage Dr. Anna and his team that for Ghana, we are waiting for you to come to Ghana to launch the FinTech Association of Ghana. We'll give you all the support to make sure that you grow. In deepening financial inclusion, my office is engaged in facilitating the cooperation between stakeholders to ensure we achieve an inclusive access to affordable financial services across the length and breadth of our country. We are working assiduously with the great efforts being put into ensuring the digital identification of all our citizens, which will provide much needed KYC requirements for, all, for an all-inclusive access to finance. The benefits of a robust digital identity system with the right legal and cybersecurity framework and adequate data privacy and confidentiality policies will deepen the opportunities for innovation, especially with credit lending to the base of the pyramid. As leaders, we have taken upon ourselves the burden of developing this country and the African continent at large. However, we will only be successful on effective collaboration with the private sector. We will take decisions that are well thought out, bearing in mind the overriding importance to resolve issues in, which, in ways that do not disenfranchise the community of innovators or spy the spirit of entrepreneurship. As a nation and a continent, our challenges are many, our opportunities are vast. We must strive to turn every debt of challenge into golden opportunities for, all, for an all-inclusive society. Once again, I thank you all for your time, most especially the organizers of this event, and wish you all a rewarding discussion and engagement. Finally, I look forward to receiving a report from this event and pledge support to your initiative. In his presentation on FinTech in Sub-Saharan Africa, a game changer, the senior resident representative of the International Monetary Fund, Dr. Amin Mati, shared the need for investment in hard and soft infrastructure to unlock the FinTech space in the continent. It's clear that you need two types of investment. You have, for the new businesses to evolve, you need self, before you had cell phone towers, but you also need to have stable electricity, you need to have broadband internet, that requires investment in hard infrastructure. You also need investment in soft infrastructure, and this is what I call the regulation to support a favorable business environment. This needs to be enabling, and then obviously invest in skills to understand financial literacy, to understand what does the new technology, what are the risks, and all of that also requires policy, also at the educational level and up. Now, when you do this, you have to keep in mind trade-offs, right? So, the FinTech, you need to have electricity and internet, but then you need to also look at who will pay for it. You need to know if the investors, what are the risks and the return of such investments, and you need to also understand, and this is what you have on the right side, what is the size of the infrastructure gap? You know, for Nigeria, the number I heard for the infrastructure gap is 35% of GDP relative to emerging market peers. That's quite a lot of money. But then you also need to find out how you finance it. And then you have to choose the technology choices that you want to do, and it also depends whether you want to do microgrid, large grids on the energy mix to try to get to uh, expand your mobile system. Mr. Ibrim Afal, Senior Country Director, Africa Development Bank, representing the President, highlighted the areas it will explore in deepening the fintech ecosystem in the continent. At the African Development Bank, we support in, 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 innovative solutions that foster financial inclusion um, through microcredit, pay as you go solutions, etc., in energy, sanitation, um, and also increase market participation. Before concluding, I would like to call on the fintech community and the financial service providers to prioritize and deliver clear and transparent products and services and to protect the personal information and financial assets of the consumers that they serve. Our collective challenge is to ensure trust in the financial products and services 
by maintaining the focus on consumer protection while supporting responsible innovation that provides social benefits. It is too early to tell if many of the innovations we are discussing here today will deliver um, on the promise to help underserved consumers, whilst the onset of the least cost mobile phones has increased penetration of mobile banking and enhanced financial conclusion. The high cost of access and money transfers remain a big challenge, limiting the access to electronic payments in Africa. Still, we are cautiously optimistic that we can surmount these challenges. Uh, we believe that regulators have a critical role to play to facilitate the inclusion of fintech into financial services ecosystem. The event featured panel sessions that discussed millennials and fintech, a tool for stimulating growth and youth empowerment, global fintech trends and opportunities for Africa, financial inclusion in Nigeria, the capital market and fintech connection, the future of Islamic fintech, regtech and subtech, the regulators roundtable, how traditional SMEs are approaching digitization and digitization transformation, not just a tech conversation. Mr. Patrick Akimwatan, CEO of EcoBank Nigeria and Dr. Ibrahim Awal speak on transforming the fintech landscape in Africa through collaboration and enabling policies. What we should do as a bank and what we are prepared to do as EcoBank is collaborate with people who have developed appropriate technologies, appropriate platforms that is scalable, that is reliable, but that delivers a solution for the customer. As long as there is a solution at the end, there is the opportunity to collaborate. This is our philosophy and this is how we hope to bring financial services to every household. Not because we build the rails ourselves, but because we have a license and we have the know-how, but then we work with others who have the skill to build scalable rails that is sustainable, that is convenient for the customer, and working together we can achieve a win-win. It's important that governments pay attention to stabilize the macroeconomic environment. Without a very solid economic environment, fintech or development will not take place. That's why our government is only two years old. Last year, we achieved a GDP growth of 8.7%, the best in the world. And for 2018, our GDP growth target is 6.9%. We are going to achieve that will be the best in Africa. So it's important that you stabilize the economy and invest in young people. The young people are the future of this country. When invest in them in Ghana, we do what we call the free senior high school education. Every school child is getting education free, helps access. That's very important for them to get the skills to help in the inclusive group that the president wants to achieve. So I want to urge FinTech and African countries to invest in the skills of young people. They can take charge, center stage of Africa's development. With the inauguration of the Africa FinTech Council, it's expected that there will be effective coordination of the ecosystem with structures and strategies that can attract real-time investment and position Africa as a viable fintech hub, driving financial inclusion and creating jobs.